Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Today we are going to create another um, design team project with our paper line uh, Milk and Cookies by Doodlebox. Here is the tag sheet, the cut apart sheet from the collection. It is super sweet, super cute. I love it. It's the same one that I used for the advent calendar. Um, so uh, my husband and I are going on a, on a date in about 45 minutes, so I got to get this out. So um, this is what I'm going to call our grandma brag book. Um, this book is super fun. I came up with this idea last year, but I think that it's still relevant this year. These are super easy to make, super fun. You use a lot of your scraps, um, or your scrap cardstock anyway, and these books come together super fast and you can um, change out the pictures. So what you're going to need is six clear envelopes so I have these ones that I bought from Amazon these clear cello bags and I got the wrong size these are exactly four by six so you cannot fit our A2 I just stuck something on my sticker sheet let me move it out the way um, you cannot fit your cards in there because um, you know the cards are four and a quarter by five and a half so it doesn't fit so if you accidentally bought these four by six ones because they were 99 cents like me this is a perfect project to use them for and I think I'm just going to use the whole bag and make a whole bunch of these books okay so you need six of those we have those there you're going to need two pieces of cardstock thin weight or use um, cereal box this just happens to be a saltine cracker box because that's what I was eating and I didn't feel like getting up to go across the room to get the other boxes. So you need two pieces at four and a quarter by six and a quarter. Um, and you need a spine piece, which is two by six and a quarter. Now, um, no, I'm lying to you. Your spine piece should be two by four and a quarter. That's easy enough to fix. Okay. Two by four and a quarter because we want it to go this way. Yeah, so two by four and a quarter. Okay, um, you also need your um, stack the deck pieces. Um, we're doing the stack the deck, that's Ginger's. Um, stack the deck, she has a full tutorial on it. It's really easy, but it's the easiest hinge system. You don't even have to think about it. It's super fast. So you need one piece, which is two by four, one and a half by four, and one by four and then you need the envelope hinges and these are one and a half by four and I'll show you what to do with those in a minute um, you're going to need your outside cover which is um, I took this page here this was the candy candy Christmas page and um, I cut it six by twelve and I'm going to attach them together. You'll see that in a minute. And then my inside pieces, I made four by 12 and I'm going to attach them together. So you'll see that. Okay. So let's move the trimmer. Let's bring in our board. Okay. So for your hidden hinge binding system, you are going to take your cardstock and you are going to um, score it at um, three eighths of an inch on both sides. Three eighths of an inch is the tick mark before the um, between the quarter of an inch and half an inch. So if you're using any scoreboard it is the second blue tick mark on the Martha Stewart. So you see that here's the quarter inch, here's the half inch. You're going to score it right here. Because I do a lot of the hidden hinge, I just marked mine with a black marker so I knew where to score. Okay, if you're on your um, paper trimmer, it's the same thing. It is the tick mark between the um, quarter of an inch and half an inch. So it would be this tick mark right here. Okay. 
So you're going to score all three pieces at E3 eighths of an inch. And this is kind of an awkward measurement. You can make your paper wider to make these little flaps wider. I've seen other people do it, but um, I don't want to have to math. So I'm just going to do this. So three eighths of an inch. And when you do it like this, it gives you this quarter of an inch in the middle, half an inch, and then inch and a half or whatever in the middle. So they stack up nicely. They fit perfectly. That's why it's called stack the deck. Okay, so let's just go ahead and make our stack the deck. I'm going to move this out of the way. So I'm going to take my... Um, I lost my quarter of an inch square tape. All right, well, I'm just going to have to use red line tape. It doesn't really matter. But score tape, you guys can see better, but um, I don't know where it is. So on the first piece, this one inch piece, I'm going to put the score tape directly down the middle in between those two score lines, but not touching either score line. Okay. And then, let me see if you guys want me to zoom in a little bit. Okay, so I just put it directly down the middle. On your next piece, you can go ahead and fold the your um, flaps up if you want to, or your phalange, I don't know what you want to call them. You can if you want. I didn't score these very well. Okay, so just get that done. So it will look like this. Okay, so that's the first one. This is the second one. So we're going to go ahead and make sure we have nice coverage on the back of this. You can use your um, score tape sheets and just cut that measurement. It'll be Probably easier and you won't have any overlapping, but for time's sake, I'm not going to try to find my score tape sheets. So there's that one, and here's the last one. And this is, I think it's one inch or one and a half inch, and there's something I don't know. But you do want to have full coverage because this is your hinge, so this is what's holding. Um, your pages in your book. So, there we go. This is also how I know that I did it right. If I only have to use one piece of score tape, two pieces of score tape, three pieces of score tape. Um, but these ones I use my three eighths of an inch score tape. So, you know, that's that. So we'll go ahead and stack it up. Um, for this, I do like to use my Tim Holtz ruler only because it's easier. Um, but of course, I have nothing to where I put it. I have a ruler. Oh, okay. So for this, I do like to mark um, where I'm stacking. So all I'm going to do is lay my Tim Holtz ruler in between the score marks. So this one has the um, three-fourths of an inch in between the two score marks. And I'm just going to take a pencil and just mark one box or a quarter of an inch. So I know where to line up this quarter of an inch there. Okay. Does that make sense? If mine doesn't make sense, definitely check out Ginger's because it made sense to me on hers. So there. So you just kind of know where to, you can eyeball it. I normally, okay, not normally, but I sometimes eyeball it. So that way, oops, sorry. So I just mark those quarter of an inch. So I know where to lay it down and it's just going to go flat. Same thing with this one. The bigger piece, you're just going to, yeah, it's an inch and a quarter in between the two. Um, score marks and you're just going to go ahead and mark 
um, the next piece is a half an inch. So you're just going to mark that half an inch two, or two boxes from each side just so you have a guide as to where to put it. If you don't mind um, having it slightly wonky, then don't worry about this step. Some people are amazing at eyeballing it, so yeah, there you go. So I'm going to go ahead and stack. So here's my two inch piece. This is my one and a half that I've already um, I folded the flaps in. I'm going to take the score tape off. Make sure there's no overhang. And I'm just going to match up those score marks. And they're going to be a little bit smaller than um, your piece, but you're just basically you're basically just getting a quarter of an inch in between flaps, if that makes sense. So like from this right hand flap to this flap, it's a quarter of an inch. From this flap to the next flap, it'll be a quarter of an inch. That's your essential goal. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and get this. That's why I hate red line tape because it doesn't just peel off. Um, the one inch piece. Just get it in there and follow our other marks. There we go. So that's it. We stack the hinge. Now this one gives you six pieces. Um, if you only want to do five, just cut one of the, um, cut the whole entire piece off if you want. I don't mind this one having six because um, we're just using those clear envelopes. So it's fine. So there you go. So you should have a quarter of an inch in between each flap thing. Okay, we do. So I really need to find my quarter of an inch. This will be so much easier to explain if you can see what I'm doing. Okay, hold on. Let me go grab another one. Hold on. Okay, sorry about that. So here's my other quarter of an inch. Okay, so what you're going to do on your um, base hinges, I guess we'll call them that, um, you, your pieces that are one and a half inch by four, um, what we're going to do is score them at half an inch and one inch because we want it to look like this. So let's go ahead and do that. And my camera's probably going to go crazy, so I'll do it pretty quickly. So your one and a half by four, we're scoring at half an inch and one inch. So half an inch by one inch, half an inch. By one inch, half an inch by one inch, and last one, half an inch by one inch. Okay, that's all the scoring you need for that. So, what we're doing is we're making a flap to attach, um, we need to attach the Oh, these are slightly bigger, like an eighth of an inch bigger. Oh, well. we're attaching the bag to the hinge and then the hinge to the stack the deck. Does that make sense? So you need score tape. You're going to fold it like in a Z and you're going to need score tape on both sides. So we're going to do all of them like this. So what you're going to do is mountain fold one side and valley fold the other. It doesn't really matter. So 
mountain, and then valley, mountain, and she was basically making it a accordion style or a um, concertine style. So one, two, three, four, five, and mountain, and then valley. Okay, just make sure you burnish those really well. They're not going to lay flat, but just make sure you're pressing. I'm using the, the linen paper from Country Craft Creations because um, it's a higher quality and you can really manipulate this paper. And I mean, I'm pressing down. You can see my fingers are turning white because I'm pressing so hard. But I like crisp, clean lines, so that's why I do that. Okay, so I like to put my mountain to the left um, just because. Because I think this part is a little confusing, but um, if you follow it exactly, you should be okay. So with the mountain fold to the left, so like this, see how this is a mountain right here, and then this a valley inside there. I'm going to put score tape on this section here, and I'm just going to use my quarter of an inch. I guess I could have used my three eighths of an inch actually. Doesn't matter. Okay. So it's going to look like this. You should have a mountain and then this floppy side. Okay. So we're going to just do that to all of them. I like to keep myself organized um, when I'm doing stuff like this because usually I'm making five or six of the same thing and then I'm just going to do all the hinges at once. And if you find the way that you like it that makes it organized for you, um, you just keep it like that. So for me, that's why I do the mountain to the left, the mountain on the left. Um, it just keeps me organized. It honestly doesn't matter because you're going to score tape a lot of this, but that keeps me organized and on track. And I'm putting score tape at the top inst instead of near the score line. Um, only because I don't want the score tape to go on that score line. So if you use your 3 eighths of an inch, just make sure you don't go on that score line. I would not recommend using the half an inch because it's going to be too much coverage. Okay, so we're going to put the envelope in there. So obviously we're going to need more score tape there which I honestly forgot. That's why I didn't do it at the same time. So I'm just going to actually kind of put this in the middle. So still with my mountain to the left, I'm going to square tape these two pieces. Come on. In the next part, um, you do have a choice of how you want to do it, and I'll tell you that in a second. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I just have to remember there's two ways to do it, because um, you'll see me doing it both ways. It's really however I'm feeling that day. And one more. Uh oh, something just fell. It just fell. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So this part is very important. We want to put, see how the envelope has the long resyllable part? We want to put that facing to the right and down. Okay, so we want the little flap on the bottom. Basically, when you put your picture in, oh, it's going to go this way. See how it's a snug fit with these are 4x6 prints. So it looks like this. This is where you stick it in. 
you want the resealable part to be on the back and not the front of the picture, which I know when you flip the book, it's going to be on the back of this picture, but that's okay. I mean, that's a picture that you're going to put something like this where we can cover that flap up if you want to. I mean, it's not a huge deal. It's just going to look like this. You can barely see it, but I don't know. I just like mine like that. So I'm just going to make sure all of mine are faced like that. So the short flap down. I mean, you're going to see it on one of them, but... Mm. Follow my OCD, people. Follow my OCD. <laughs> okay, so now we're just going to go ahead and take the square tape off, and we're just going to make sure there's no overhang. Take it off, no overhang, and we're just going to sandwich that back. This is an easy part because um, you can always peel it off if you don't lay it correctly because it's a syllabus. But we're not going to overthink it. We're just going to lay it and go and sandwich. So now you have, see, now on the back you have that flap which we're going to attach to our hinge. So let's go ahead and do the rest of our bags very quickly. And we're just going to, making sure you get up to the score line but not on it. So lay and sandwich. And hopefully this makes sense. And just see like that one I just dropped it. It was completely off. So I can just pick those up. Nope. Oh, this one does not want to come off. Look at that, it's coming off the paper before it does the bag, which means I did not varnish. This is a good example of, I didn't varnish, so look how easy that square tape just came right off of the paper. That's not okay. That means I did not have a good adhesion and um, it could pop off. And you don't want your work to pop off, do you? So. We gotta make sure we varnish that in really well. Embarrassing. Because your score tape, it should be once it's down, it is down. So some of my bags are a little bit over, but that's okay. I mean, it's like a sixteenth of an inch. I'm not going to cry over a sixteenth of an inch. See, like this one, I didn't varnish it well either. Well, I actually didn't varnish any of them, did I? But just make sure you varnish it after the fact. Okay. When you're doing these by yourself, as always, it is gonna be quicker than you watching me doing it and chit-chatting and whatnot. I am a, not a fast crafter, I would say at medium speed, um, but these books, I can pop them out one book in about 20 minutes. So, or I think like five, no, I could do quite a bit of them in an hour. I think I can do like four or five in an hour, so yeah. Okay, so this is where I was saying you can do one of two ways. So what you're going to do is attach this leftover flap to your hinge like this. So what I am going to do is I'm going to put the score tape on the hinge. You can put your score tape in here if you would like, but because this is a half an inch and this is only three eighths of an inch, it gets a little confusing. So I am going to do the tape on my hinge system. And honestly, if I was doing this um, without having to show you guys, I just would have taped up the hinges before I put it together. 
but it was really confusing um, to see that on camera. Like there was no way I could show you. I mean, I could have shown it that way, but it was very confusing. I think in my mind it was. So I just went this way. And plus this way um, allows you to manipulate these hinges to get them prepared of being turned. Because nothing's worse than like a stiff book where you can't turn the pages. You know, I'm going to leave that one on the table. But if I can turn the pages easily, I'm going to look at those pictures all day long. So all I did was put score tape on this side. And now I'm just going to put score tape on this side. Um, you can use your um, your glue stick method when you're sticking this. If you don't want to eyeball your hinges onto this. So you just rub a little bit of regular old Elmer's glue stick um, across the sticky tape. So it just gives you that extra minute or two, but it still dries with the strength of score tape. I'm okay with it, so I'm just going to um, lay my stuff down. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to decorate the book because I have about 15 minutes. What's wrong? 15 minutes? Yeah, I'll be done in about 15. So there's that. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the score tape off and make sure my pages are the way that I want them. And I'm just going to take this flap and put it in here. So make sure there's no overhang. This is easy because you can just go right up to the score line and um, pop it in. It's hard why I'm holding it because the shadow. So there you go. And then the next one. So my husband's over here making fun of me because we went to breakfast and the second I got home, I put my pajamas back on, <laughs> including the infamous house bra, you know, which one I'm talking about, ladies. Um, so he was like, you were dressed and now you're not. No, nope, I'm not dressed anymore. But I already know what I'm going to wear because I had it on this morning. So, you know. So there's page two. And I didn't line my pages up. And that is not okay. That is really bad the way I just did that. But it's stuck on, so we're just going to have to deal with it. Yep, because I don't think I can take it off. Okay, maybe I can, because I haven't varnished these yet, so maybe I can gently peel this off and line this up. Ah, I hope so, because I don't want to have to redo this book. I need it for a gift. Okay. This, again, this is what I like about the linen paper. It's super tough, so it's not, um, it's not ripping. Okay. So let's make sure our pages are lined up so you don't have that, um, one page where ugh, it was really bad. I wasn't paying attention. So see, even though I peeled it off, it did not take the integrity of the linen paper away. Okay, so my pages are lined up. Now I can go ahead and seal this as needed. Okay, phew, saved it. Okay, right, let me focus on this. Actually, I think it's good that you guys get to see these Ipsy Daisies so you know how to fix it because you can you can save it. If you're using a quality paper, you can usually save it. I know some people use all that undo and all that. I didn't buy it because it's expensive. Um, 
So I just kind of gently, well, as gently as I can be, um, peeled it up and it was fine. So again, I'm going to line up my pages and then I will, whenever I do stuff on camera, it's so much harder than in real life. Mm -hmm. Curse of the camera, I guess. So let me just make sure. Okay, so that one's lined up pretty nicely. And, and it's harder working with these clear bags because you can't see, because they're clear, you know, you can't see what the heck you're doing. You can do one side at a time on the score tape again. If you um, are a little queasy with this part, I suggest you go ahead and use the glue stick method, which I probably should do, but I'm not. Just make sure my page. So only that one page was really off. So I must have did something when I was putting the bag in the hinge. Because I remember all the other ones are lining up perfectly. Did I not? Okay, I didn't put, oh, I did do all six. Okay, so here's this one and this one. And there's overhang. So I didn't check for overhang on all of them, and there is some overhang, but I'm just going to go ahead and scrape it off. I mean, is it a big deal there's overhang? No, it just looks kind of grimy, but I'll just push it down with my finger. It will be fine. And get over there. And, and some of mine are off, like you can see right here where I didn't exactly do it nicely. That's fine. I plan on putting strips of paper to cover that. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. Okay, last one, thankfully. This is where I wish I only had five, right? Okay, hopefully. Let me show that. So I think that's lined up. Yep. Okay. So the most difficult part is done. Next is the easy peasy part. And then if you're like me, the matting is the part that gives you the, <laughs> but we got it. We got this, right? Okay. Let's move the mess. We are going to pull out our chipboard pieces. Yeah. So I need my book to go like this, like this. Um, just make sure I cut these correctly. Yeah. Right. So you can do this part in cardstock and then just cut out strips of paper to um, go over it if you want to have a cardstock border. I don't want to have a cardstock border this time. I know it's shocking, right? Because I'm all about borders. But not today. So I'm just trying to see where it looks the cutest. And I'm going to just take the quarter of an inch score tape and attach my two six by 12 pieces together on whatever side you want. Up. So this is gonna be my cover with the candy. I'm gonna try to varnish that because as we all saw, if you don't varnish, your glue doesn't adhere and this is not a linen paper so it is not going to be easy to take it off so we don't want to have to do that so we're just going to connect it at that fourth of an inch that's it um this is the back side which is just super cute too but i just really like that candy what i'm going to do is go ahead and put my spine in the middle of that 
line. And yes, it is going to give me a lot of cut off on the ends, but that's okay because you can always use that for a different project. You can start with this like this and have that seam on the back piece if you want. Um, I'm not too bothered by that, but since I'm not doing, if I was doing cardstock, it wouldn't matter because then you just cover it with a pattern paper. But since I'm doing just the pattern paper, I am my seam on my spine, right? Okay, so this is thinner paper. The cover is, we're not using cardstock. So I'm just gonna use my art glitter glue. Sometimes I will put score tape um, and art glitter glue if it's the, linen cardstock only because the cardstock is thicker but um I feel like this is fine so I'm just going to center this the best I can on the top and bottom like so I'm gonna take my eighth of an inch score tape which this again um, this is your preference if you want your book to have an eighth of an inch or a fourth of an inch in between covers. This one, you honestly only need an eighth of an inch because it's the clear pages. So you don't need that extra room for chunk because we're not, we can't put chunk in here because um, those envelopes will not allow you to hold. It may fit. It will hold two pictures in there for one for each side, but you're not fitting too much more in there. So you don't have to leave room for chunky, chunky embellishment. So mine are just gonna line up just like that. And okay. we are actually almost done, believe it or not. I just want to make sure I get these corners really well. Line it up. And drop it. Okay. And line it up. Well, not line it up yet. Glue. Varnish, varnish, varnish. Make sure that guy is dripping down. Okay. I'm gonna take my paper trimmer on this because I want these sides to be to be nice so I can use this big piece on a different project. I'm gonna leave about an inch. Um about an inch from oh, you can't see it from the side. So all I do is when I do like this, I just make sure I go by this inch line and make sure there's an inch from this corner to here, which is going to give me a little bit more. So you're just going to cut off. Oh, it works out. You're going to cut off two and three fourths actually three. Yeah, we can do that. We're going to cut off three inches. Actually, we probably could do three and a half. Yeah, I'm going to cut off three and a half inches. So that way I have two big pieces left over that I can use for mats or whatever next time. So I just cut off three and a half inches. Um, you could probably do a little bit more if you wanted to, but I'm just going to stay at three and a half. Score tape, not quarter of an inch. Again, you can use your art glitter glue, but my time is running down, so I'm just going to use my score tape. I'm going to go on the edge here. 
Um, I don't have time for my art glitter glue to dry, even though it dries like a minute. I don't have four minutes to wait for it to dry. When you put the score tape and the art glitter glue, you know the score tape part of it is down, so you can keep going while the art glitter glue is drying. Does that make sense? Okay, so we got that done and done. Let's go ahead and make sure we manage that super well. Super well. So my eighth of an inch got stuck. Okay, we need to martyr our corners. Getting up to that um, corner, but you know, leaving about an eighth of an inch between the paper and the corner. Or you can leave more, it doesn't matter. You just want to make sure that corner gets covered. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and what I'm doing is just pushing the paper up to get it ready to fold. Like this one didn't get up to the line. Because I don't want to have any cracking. So let's just kind of manipulate it. Let's get that crisp edge. You show that paper who's boss. And no, the paper is not the boss. <laughs> okay, that crisp edge. Okay, again, flip the corner. And this corner here. Okay, so for this one, I am going to take the middle pieces off because I do want my, um, I don't need the extra stability of the backing like I did for the advent calendar. So I did go ahead and take that off. We're going to take the bottom side off. Use some art glitter glue here. Just a little scribble of it. And voila. See, didn't even think about it. We already made our crease. Just drop it down. Don't think about it. Throw it. Scribble it. And drop it down. Okay. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Same thing with this piece. Okay, so when you get to your corners, this is where you need to push in these extra pieces here. So I'm just pushing it in with my nail just so it looks like that. I'm just pushing, and I may have left too much for these ones, but it's fine. But you just want it to have that wrapped look. Okay. Oh my gosh. I'm hurrying. I'm almost done. Okay. And that one. This one I didn't have to push it in because it was fine. Okay. So the inside. See how this 12 inches is just too short? So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with our seam. Um. We are going to attach two pieces of 4x12 um, with our score tape. Same thing, I want to make sure that that. I want my seam to be in the middle so I can cover it with my hinge. So I just need to measure how much I want. So this should be what, 14 and a half, right? Because we had six and a quarter by six and a quarter, so that's 12 and a half plus two, 14 and a half plus a half an inch, so by 15. Yeah, that was right. I do math. So 
I want mine to be so I want a quarter of an inch border. And I need my spine to be in the middle here. So I'm just eyeballing a quarter of an inch and I'm just marking where I think the quarter of an inch is going to be. And then we'll see if it's a cohesive measurement. So I am going to cut off four and a quarter inches off of each side. So again, I have those nice big pieces I can use. They're straight. But now I have my seam in the middle. I'm going to cut enough off, enough off. So I'm going to do four and a half on each side. Cut off four and a half on each side. Yeah. Or just, you know, make sure you measure yours because mine may be different. Actually, four and three fourths, on, four and three eighths on each side. It's not quite a half. Or you can do the whole put one piece here, one piece here, and then a middle piece. I don't want to be bothered with that. So this piece just measures 12, 14 and a half. So this measures 14 and a half. So just get your paper to be 14 and a half. Okay? That's all you need. I'm going to go ahead and or glitter glue this. I just went over my 45 minutes that my husband gave me, and I still have the address. So we're almost done now. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this. And again, we're just eyeballing. If you want to use your Tim Holtz ruler to get exactly a quarter of an inch all around, you can do that, but I'm okay. This. Okay, so let's make sure that this is down, which it is. Now we need to go ahead and train our book. So making sure we fold it up on those fold lines and not having bubbles. Okay. Just flatten it. Flatten it a couple times. Okay. And just making sure the glue's not dry. I usually wait for the glue to dry. Um, all I'm doing is getting in those creases. That's it. It's fine. It's perfect. Okay. Now all we need to do is put our pages in. And we are just going to center those hinges as best as we can in the middle of that. So I'm just removing the score tape. Taking away the overhang because you don't want to see that sticky glue. Um, for this one, I really want to use my glow stick, but I don't know where it is. So I'm just going to use, normally at this part, I would just rub glue stick. I don't know where my glue stick is, so I'm just going to rub this wet glue. And this is just Elmer's. I just want to give that score tape you know, that wiggle room, like literally wiggle room so I can wiggle this um, around because I'm just going to eyeball it. So I have to pick it up to eyeball it. Just make sure it's in the middle as best as you can. It's about a half an inch. And I'm going to drop it. I think that's perfect. And I'm going to let it be for a second because it's not perfect. Ah! Okay, that's okay. 
that's how we did that white blue, so I can just move it down just a smidge bit. Okay, now it's perfect. Okay. Right, there we go. So your book is now done. It is ready for pictures. So like I said, we can put pictures in. So I want my top to be where the um, the um, reusable flaps are going to go towards the back. So you may have to cut your pictures down because you cut off an entire half an inch. So you do need to cut your pictures down by half an inch to put them in there. I forgot about that part. I'm just going to cut our leaves off. So we're going to have to go ahead. So you could have put your pictures in first, but then you can't reuse it. So see, then you seal it. And you have a cute little picture book where you can flip it and put your pictures in like so. So you know, grandma can change the pictures um, as the grandkids get bigger and she can reuse the book. Okay, that was probably a bad picture to put there so the flap is in our face, but that's okay. Um, you can put your to-do list in here. This is my Country Craft Creations to-do list. This says Perpetual Calendar, Anne Marie's book, um, some other stuff I need to do. Put your to-do list in there. You can put um, tickets. You can put whatever you want, and you have a cute little flip book. And you're going to decorate the top. So I'll have the decorated part on the picture, but I got to go. So I don't want to do that right now. And then um, you can do your, you can do it horizontally as well. I just had a whole bunch of vertical pictures, so I wanted mine to be vertical. Um, but obviously you can do it horizontal. So I hope you guys like that tutorial. I hope you make a couple of these. All right, guys, off to date night. Bye.